I just figured out how to set up the Kebab 5 for reverse thrust inverted 3D flight, and I'm so excited about it. And what that means is that the motors not only produce thrust in the downward direction, but you could also reverse thrust and go the other way. I want to show you how you can turn just about any FPV race quadcopter into a 3D machine. It's super easy. To set it up, all you have to do is set each of your ESCs to bi-directional, enable 3D in clean flight or beta flight, set up minimum motor speeds, and then for good results you really should have good speed controllers with active braking and multi-shot. BL Heli S speed controllers are ideal. And so the way you fly that with a transmitter, up is positive thrust, all the things you're used to is right up here. But you go below the middle point and it switches to reverse thrust. So these are normal props, they have a nice scoopy airfoil that works a lot better in one direction than the other direction. So they actually do have 3D props which are just like little flat paddles with no curvature or anything. So they work about the same in one direction as the other. So they're not as good in normal flight as normal propellers, but they have about equal thrust in both directions. So it's a compromise. I highly recommend trying out Betaflight 3.0. If you haven't tried Beta Flight Configurator instead of Clean Flight, then I highly recommend it. It's pretty cool. SP Racing F3. They don't have Beta Flight 3.0 in the firmware selection yet, but it just came out. And so if you just go and Google Beta Flight 3.0 and find the GitHub, you can find the page here and you can download your firmware or the 3.0 firmware for your flight controller. I'm using the SP Racing F3 here. So you get that and then you go over here, firmware flasher, and you say load local firmware instead of from the internet and you just load your the file that you downloaded and then you flash that. So first thing, I'm going to use BL Heli Suite on the PC to talk to and program my speed controllers and enable 3D mode. So if you haven't seen this yet, it's a really awesome program that you can use to program your speed controllers with your flight controller. You don't have to unplug or unsolder anything. So let's connect. So once you're connected to your flight controller with the USB, definitely no props, but get your speed controller some power and then hit check, that'll load the speed controllers. So you know when you calibrate your speed controllers by doing maximum throttle, plugging it in, going minimum throttle, you can actually just set that manually here. And so uh, it's more accurate, I just set it to 1000 and 2000 here and center throttle to 1500. And then right here you have normal, reverse, and bi-directional. All my motors work with normal, so I'm gonna use bi-directional. If you're using reversed with a speed controller, you'll have to go to bi-directional reversed, I assume, I've never used that. Oh, and let's do this one at a time. So right click on number one, that singles out number one, bi-directional. Let's write this setup. Number two, bi-directional, right setup. Number three, bi-directional, right setup. And right click number four, bi-directional, right setup. Okay, and then I'll just double check number one. Yep, bi-directional. They all look good. Okay, and that's all you need here. Disconnect. And we'll move over to beta flight. Okay, now in beta flight, let's go to connect. And you go to configuration. And way down at the bottom is 3D. You can enable 3D mode. Save and reboot. Let's go ahead and check out the motors tab. The way speed controllers are told what to do is they are given a signal with a range between 1000 and 2000. This unit is picoseconds, but just ignore that. And the way the flight controller tells them what to do is by giving them a signal between 1000 and 2000. But due to a couple of reasons, the defaults are usually a little bit narrower than this, and I like to widen them out to 1 and 2000. To understand bi-directional motor speeds, first let's see how it works normally. When the flight controller is turned on and the quad is unarmed, it gives the speed controller the minimum command value. This is usually set to 1000 and it's the speed that the motors will not spin at. When the quad is armed, it bumps that signal up to the minimum throttle value, which is the slowest speed that the motors will reliably spin at. By default, this number is actually pretty high, like 1150 or something, making it hard to descend. You set this correctly by raising the throttle in the motors tab and seeing when the motors start to spin reliably, and then add like 10 to it or something to avoid motor stall and restart. My numbers often end up around 1035. As I'm flying and I bring the throttle stick down to the bottom, the flight controller will hold the minimum throttle value, allowing you to still have full control in the air. You have to disarm the vehicle to bring the throttle below the minimum throttle value to stop the motors. So setting bi-directional speed is a lot like that but in two directions. 3D neutral is like minimum command, it's the middle part where the motors won't spin. To arm the vehicle you have to hit the arm switch and bring the throttle up to the middle. If you were to raise the signal above the neutral point, the motors would start to spin in the positive direction. And if you were to lower the signal below the neutral point, the motors would start to spin in the negative direction. But in the middle of those two directions is the dead band where the motors don't spin. And we need the motors to be spinning to have control in the air. 
So we can set the minimum throttle in the positive direction, just like before, with a 3D deadband high box. And we can set the minimum throttle in the negative direction too, with a 3D deadband low box. So when I arm the quad, the flight controller will give the ESCs one of those numbers, and as I raise the throttle, the motors will follow. But as I lower the throttle to neutral, the motors will hold 3D deadband high until I lower the throttle below 3D deadband low, and then it will switch directions to that number, and the motors will reverse direction. Now the motors will increase speed in the reverse direction as you lower the stick. You have to raise the throttle stick above 3D deadband high to switch the motor direction again, and you have to disarm to stop the motors. And you can see that it's giving it a center of throttle position of 1488. And so what I'm going to do is go to configuration. Oh, 3D neutral. So neutral 3D. I set uh, the middle position in BL Heli Suite to 1500. So I'm going to do 1500. Save and reboot. Go to the motors tab. And now you see it's giving it 1500. So let's see how it works. Click on the master switch. And then I'm going to do arrows up. Okay, 15, 17, and my motors are spinning. Now, you can get really good results if you use really high quality speed controllers. Uh, the ones I'm using are the Acon 30 amp ESCs and they're using BL Heli S firmware. So you can get some really slow motors. Like look how slow these motors are going. It's really slow for 2300 kV motors. And then if you go below 1500, now it's spinning the other way. So there seems to be a little bit of a dead band between those two directions. Let's go to configuration set 3d neutral to uh, 1500 or so if you set that in bo heli suite otherwise leave it but basically you want to widen your your 3d dead band about this is what i found works for me so this is basically your negative thrust minimum throttle value or anything closer to 1500 here is going to slow the motor speed too slow and this is your positive motor minimum throttle speed and so anything closer to 1500 on this side is going to make the motors go too slow. But if you have this number too high, then your motor's minimum throttle will be a bit high and it'll be a little annoying and it'll have a really sharp switch to the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and arm it and put the th stick in the middle and you can see the speed that they're spinning at and just basically widen that number or narrow that number range until the motors spin about the speed that you want them to. And that should be it. Uh, go outside pop it in the air, try zooming towards the ground and just be careful. It's a whole new way of thinking when you do this. So let's go test this thing out. Okay, prop directions. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. 